So if I wanted to make a hundred thousand dollars in 2024, this is exactly what I would do. This is the step-by-step -step guide, the playbook that I've done in my life, that my business partner has done. Countless people on our teams have done this, so I know it works, right? So let's get right into it. Each step is gonna be explained in the next step. So you just gotta stay with me here. The first thing that I would do to start off would be land some sort of gig where I can pull in 3,000 to $5,000 a month. This could be anything, dude. This could be working in a factory. It could be working at Target. It could be being a bartender. A bartender would be preferred, and we're gonna get into that later. But essentially, all I would do in this first part is save as much cash as I could. I would just try and print money through a nine to five, something simple, just a low barrier to entry gig that I could make decent money in just to get my feet under me. And here's the truth that some people don't tell you, dude. Sometimes the first part of your journey on your road to being successful requires you to work long hours. It requires you to bust your ass. It requires you to work overtime. Sometimes that's just what it takes. At the start, success might wear steel toe boots. It might wear blue jeans. It might have a name tag and it might punch a clock because that's what it takes. And then from there, while I'm working this job, I would minimize my expenses as low as possible. If I had like a friend or family and I could move into their house, I would do it. I would let my ego take the hit, move back with my parents, and I would save as much money as I could. I'm just working full time. Now, the reason why I said earlier as to why I would get into bartending is because it's gonna teach you social skills. You're gonna meet people, you're gonna network with people. If you can find a you know bartender or a serving gig at like a nice restaurant in your town, you can meet people, bro. And the biggest thing that I've ever learned is it is not so much in this world about what you know, but it's almost more important about who you know. This is gonna build your network. It's gonna help you with opportunities in the future. And most importantly, bartending, it's very lucrative, dude. You can make it pretty freaking good money, especially with little to no skills. Now, while I'm maximizing my income in the nine to five opportunity, and my expenses are extremely low over here, I'm just sitting on a bed of cash, right? I'm just sitting on this bed full of cash, saving my money, and here's what I would do with it. I would start using that money to invest in skills, whatever it is, dude. If you wanna be a video editor, be a video editor. Just buy a course on it, buy books on it, get a library pass, even better. Watch free content, dude. Whatever you want to do, but here's what I would do. I would learn sales because it's changed my life and I can speak from experience on it. It's the most important skill that I've ever learned. So I would spend hours just studying it. If I didn't have the money to buy a course, I wouldn't buy one. I would just watch all the content regarding sales that I could become immersed in that environment. When you don't learn sales, if you just want to do it on your own, you can do it. Like that's, I've seen people do it. And here's a problem that I notice. You get shit on, man. It's a new skill. You don't really know what you're doing. Now, if you have a mentor or a course, you get knowledge and you can also get experience and that expedites your process. So the name of this video is how can we make a hundred grand in 2024? You wanna expedite the whole process. So as soon as I had the money, I would buy a course on sales. Not some like crazy one that's 10 grand, five grand, nothing like that. Something that provides me with a bunch of value and is at an affordable price for me. And then from there, I would start looking for a low barrier to entry sales gig. Something simple, dude. Right now, especially on YouTube, on Instagram, dude, you've seen it. People are meat riding high ticket sales. They're absolutely meat riding it. But they're not telling you the whole story. They're telling you that you should sell a info product for a, you know, like a mastermind maybe. Maybe you should sell for a course whatever it is, but that's truly not high ticket. High ticket sales is when it do, when it's expensive as shit, when the product or the service is like 50K, whether that be real estate, solar, insurance, pest control, these are all good industries where the ticket's extremely high. Now in pest control, it's a subscription-based model. So there's a lot of money in there. It just kind of stacks up over time and you can sell several of these accounts per day. So I'd pick an industry and solar like I did, the ticket on the highest end was 135 grand. That's high ticket sales. Now, as far as industries go, solar, 
pest control, insurance, and real estate. Real estate, it's gonna have the highest barrier to entry. You gotta get certified, you have to pay their setup fees, especially if you wanna get with a broker. It costs, I mean, for me, I think it was around like $1,500 just to get onboarded with a broker. So another thing to keep in mind, the higher the ticket, usually the longer it takes to get paid. So that's the reason why the first step about saving that money having you know that rainy day fund, it's extremely important because you give yourself time to get paid. For instance, in solar, it can take up to 30, 40 days to get paid, but that's why the commissions are so high. We've had deals in solar, we make 10 to $12,000 off one deal. So land in one of these industries, it's low barrier to entry, learn from a team, a mentor, you already got a course so you have your feet under you and you already got some money in the bank. From here, I would master appointment setting, get great at it, learn everything I could, stay up till 12, buy another course if I have to, whatever it takes, dude, learn everything I can from the people that I'm around. Now, in an environment like this, when you get into you know, pest control, solar, insurance, you can work online, but starting off, dude, that, that's maybe not what you should do. You're, you're gonna learn less because you're not inversed in the environment. For me, the main reason I think I, you know, did what I was able to do in my first year was because I was around people who knew way more than me, right? Like I had a mentor, you know, I had coaches, I bought courses, all that stuff. I was immersed in the game. I was a student of it. And that's how you get good quickly. And that's how you're going to make it happen in a year's time frame, right? So I master appointment setting, I master closing. And once I'm to that point where I'm self-sufficient, I'm a dog, I can close, Right? Here's what I would do next. I would start to advertise everything I've done in my life on social media. Now, at this point, since you're closing your own deals, you're self-sufficient, you probably do, I would say around 10, maybe $20,000 a month. I would take some of that money and I would use it to market my Instagram, let's say. And then from there, I would launch paid ads explaining my life story, how I went from working in a factory to making 20, $30,000 a month in sales push that out to people and offer them the same opportunity as me to be a part of our team. And then from there, I have a new lever that I unlock. So instead of me having to work 10, 12, 14 hour days to make 20K a month, I can start training members of my team. I now have a funnel for recruitment and I can train them to set appointments for me. So they can set the appointments. I can close the appointments because I'm more qualified to do so. And the rep also makes money. The appointment setter, you can split the deal with them. That's what I'd recommend. Don't be unethical. Don't gouge your reps, gouge people on your team. That, that's just bad blood, bro. And it's not good for business. Make sure you split the deal. Make sure it's fair. Make sure it's good for both parties. Like if you were on the other side, it'd be fair to you on the other side, right? So now you have this team of setters. They're setting appointments and you can just focus on closing. All you have to do is just literally master closing even further. And then from there, you can get to 20, 40, 50, 60. Dude, I know people who have done over $100,000 a month with this model right here. And then from there to the point where you have a team, they're setting appointments, it's gonna get to the point where they start closing their own deals and you teach them how to close. And then at that point, you just get a cut off the deals they put through. So you are now the manager. You manage subordinates on your team, you recruited them, and now you're incentivized to help them perform. So this is the difference from the nine to five world is the manager actually has an incentive for his team to perform. You gotta train them, bro. You gotta take care of them. You gotta lead them. And at this point, this is where I would invest in a leadership coach, a performance-based coach. I've had people, for instance, like a high school basketball coach. I had a coach from the Packers, Coach Jones, incredible coach, helped me out as far as leadership goes and all that and guys on our team. And it was life-changing, bro, learning all those skills. It's invaluable. The biggest thing that's standing in your way right now from getting from where you are to where you wanna be is skill. And if you wanna expedite that process, in some cases you have to pay for it. And if you don't want to, that's fine. You can do it your way. Just know it could take longer. So top to bottom, starting from nine to five, making you know three, $5,000 a month on the high end, to making 20 up to $30,000 a month as a closer and a team leader. And by that point, the year's probably over. You've made well over six figures. Six figures should be the minimum. If you're in a good opportunity, good placement, you learn the skills, you did not leave a stone unturned. You mastered it. You did everything you could. 
That is how I did it. So I know it works. That is how my business partner did it. That is how my team leader did it, my mentor, everything in between. This is how I've seen people scale by far the fastest. So if you're looking to get into sales, just DM me your email on Instagram and I'm gonna send you the best video. That's my favorite regarding sales. So I'll send it to you for free. But as always, stay focused, stay committed, and most importantly, bro, chase what you want to do. If you don't want to do sales, don't do sales. But for me, in my experience in this game, it has by far been the biggest, biggest thing that has gotten me from where I was to where I am today and where I will be in the future. I believe it's the foundation of business. If you agree, great. If we don't see eye to eye, it is what it is, I understand. So stay tuned and I will see you guys in the next one.